Alhamdulillah <laughs> يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون. We praise Allah subhanahu wa taala. We send peace and blessings upon none other than Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. My dear brothers, sisters, and everyone listening, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam has said. Ala inni uti tu jawami dua. Listen carefully. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam is saying that I have been blessed by Allah subhanahu wa taala. The ability to be able to make inclusive dua with very little words. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam was blessed in making dua with very little words. You know, sometimes when we look into the duas that people make, we are able to see what they are going through. How they are, we can also find out by looking at what they pray for. When someone makes dua for rizq, for their provision, then they are in need of their provision. When someone makes dua for their health, for their wealth, may, may, it might even be that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing them through their health and their wealth. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, let's look at one of his duas. He says, Allahumma inni as'aluka fi'l al-khayrat wa tarqa al-munkarat O Allah, I ask you, O Allah, I ask you to be of those who are committed in the doing of good. And I ask you for me to be among those who are committed in abandoning all evil. But look at how he وسلم, ended the dua. What did he also add to his dua? He said, وَحُبَّ الْمَسَاكِينَ And I make dua that you instill within me the love for the poor and the needy. My dear brothers and sisters and everyone, the Prophet ﷺ from this dua, what we get to know about him is what a kind person he is, what a generous person he is, what a compassionate person he is. That even without any trials and tribulations at that time. Without any sign, he was still making dua that even for the future, even in the times yet to come, O oh Allah, grant that love within me for the poor and needy, so that when the time to help out the poor and the needy comes, that O oh Allah, I have the love to do that. So the when we truly look into the du'as that the Prophet wasallam has made, we see many lessons as well. Not only do we get the lessons from the sunnah, from his hadith, but we also get the lessons from his seerah and his biography. But there is also an aspect that many times is overlooked, which is the du'a of the Prophet wasallam. Every time he made dua, not only is it a request to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but also a lesson for his ummah, for, uh, for us, the followers of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now what is the best dua that you and I can make? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, Salullah al فَمَا أُعْطِيَ عَبْدٌ شَيْئًا أَفْضَلَ مِنَ الْعَافِيَةِ O people, my community, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for afiyah. 
to be in the state of well-being. For surely, verily, no doubt, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not provide anything better for his servant except for being in the state of well-being. Now, this word afia is ism jins. It's all inclusive. We can be well in the state of well-being in terms of our health. We can be in the state of well-being in terms of our wealth. We can even be in the state of well-being in our relationships <coughs> with everyone. When someone has true afia, they are well off in the state of well-being in every aspect of life. This is what the Prophet ﷺ has advised us, has taught us. Now from among the, the angles that we can look at, today's khutbah will be dedicated to one specific side of the afiyah. It is the afiyah of when a person, of a person's psychological well-being, their mental health and their emotional well-being. You see, my dear brothers and sisters, many times this is a very difficult conversation to have within many communities and especially within Islam and the Muslim communities we have this topic a very difficult and hard conversation to have within ourselves as well because many times we are taught by society by our community that there are some illnesses which are okay to talk about when we ask someone, how is your diabetes? You will see no one holding back. When we ask about how are you, they will say, everything is good, alhamdulillah, but my blood pressure is high. I am struggling with my cholesterol. But how about when you and I ask someone, how are you? Are you depressed? Do you have anxiety? Are you struggling with anything mentally? Not everyone, my dear brothers and sisters, comes out. It's because we haven't made the environment, we haven't made ourselves approachable for people to open up to us. And not only that, we see, subhanAllah, a lot of myths within our Muslim community. A few examples that when someone says that, my dear brother, my dear sister, I am depressed. I have anxiety. I, I'm always in the state of fear and worry. We say, oh brother, oh sister, when was the last time you recited the Quran? How is your prayer? Do you pray regularly? Now, this brother or sister will say, before I had depression, before talking to you, and now I feel even more depressed. This is not how to go about it, my dear brothers and sisters. What we want to do is to be open for people to express themselves. And not only that, to be able to give relief. And if not, at least that hearing support where we don't only listen with our ears, we also listen with our hearts. You will see within the Quran, many times Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned many, many rewards in Jannah. But what we normally tend to do is we focus on only the physical rewards. That in Jannah we will have flowing rivers of water, of honey, of milk. We, we will have palaces, mansions. We will have foods and servants. But we overlook the majority, the bulk of the descriptions of Jannah is emotional rewards. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in no less than 53 places, فَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ That from this day onwards, from today, you will not undergo, you will not go through fear and grief. You will not go through khawf and huzn. What is fear and grief? Fear is things the worry, the stress that people have about what will come in the future. Grief is the worries 
and troubles that they go through thinking about the past. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one in position to be able to say that from today, no fear, no grief will ever come near you, will ever touch you. That's why we see that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, every morning he would wake up and one of his adhkar, one of his du'as that he would read in the morning would be, Allahumma, oh Allah, inni a'udhu bika min al-hammi wal huzn I ask you to protect me. I seek your protection from stress and anxiety, from worrying and depression. Qalu al-hammu ma urifa sababuhu yusamma al-ham. Wa ma lam yu'raf sababuhu yusamma al-ghan. Then, not only that, my dear brothers and sisters, we also see that this also implies that when people express themselves that they have a mental health difficulty, an issue that they are going through, we can't always relate it to their religion. We can't always say that it is because of their connection with Allah. Maybe it is weak, maybe it is low. That is why you are going through all of this. This is not the case, my dear brothers and sisters. Because if that was the case, Let's look through what we see in our hadith and Quran literature. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam also says, مَا أَصَابَ الْعَبْدِ مِنْ هَمٍ وَلَا حُزْنٍ Any time stress, depression, grief, worries falls upon a believer. And then the hadith carries on. But let's take a pause. What is the Prophet saying to us? That whenever a believer is touched by stress, worries, anxiety and depression, and all of these mental health issues. So when we say that a believer can never have this, are we saying, are we saying that the Prophet has got it wrong? Astaghfirullah. And not only that, we see in the Qur'an about the story of Ya'qub alayhi salam. He was a prophet of Allah. He was the son of a prophet of Allah. He was also the father of a prophet of Allah. Now Ya'qub alayhi salam in the Qur'an, we know that he, he became blind in his later ages. Now the question comes, why or how? The Qur'an answers that. He went blind out of grief, out of worrying and stressing so much. <clears throat> now the question comes, worry and stress, these are emotional things. Turning blind is something physical. If you were to ask a doctor, that can worrying and stress lead to someone becoming blind? You will hear and you will find out that there is actually a condition. When a person emotionally, mentally, psychologically is going through so much pain, is going through so much struggles, that that pain and struggle can manifest, can express itself <coughs> through physical form. This is very common in psychology and it is known as somatization. When a person is going through so much trouble that you can see it in their outward, in their outer form as well. Have you and I never worried so much that it causes our stomachs to ache, that we lose our appetite and that we feel like we can't hold it in, in anymore, that we need to go and vomit, it all comes back to this. So the Prophet Ya'qub has mentioned in the Qur'an that he lost his sight out of worrying and stress. <coughs> Can any one of us dare to say that the Prophet Ya'qub 
didn't have Iman, that he didn't have faith in Allah, how could he feel the feelings of worrying and stress? al billah, may Allah protect us. So this is not the case, my dear brothers and sisters. A believer can still be a believer, a practicing Muslim, <clears throat> and still have a good connection and relationship with Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, but yet at the same time be troubled in their heart and worried in their mind. These are qualities of a believer. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَقَدْ خَلَقُنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ No doubt, surely, mankind have been created in the state of troubles and trials. <clears throat> nowhere, you will find nowhere in the Quran or the Sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam any statement saying that when a believer is practicing, when they are fulfilling all of their duties and responsibilities, that they will not be afflicted by any kind of stress, anxiety, troubles or tests. You will never find this. It, being practicing does not mean that you are relieved from this. We can't see this even in the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, who was the best of all believers. Even he went through a time period known as Amul Huzn, the year of stress, the year of worries, subhanAllah. And then we find another myth, another <coughs> misunderstanding without, within our community, that when someone expresses themselves, saying that I am depressed, I have anxiety, please help me, then we turn back and we say, that it's all in your head, it's all in your mind. We brush it off so easily and we turn our fingers and blame it back on them. My dear brothers and sisters, this is no way to go about it. It is especially not from the teachings and the lessons that we find from our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let me just share one example from the seerah from those who truly follow the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was performing i'tikaf, secluding himself in the masjid, dedicated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is something very beautiful, my dear brothers and sisters. And while he was in the state of i'tikaf, a man came with so much grief and worries. You know, sometimes you can look at a person's face and just tell how much they are going through. <laughs> Facial expressions sometimes tell a lot more than their actions. And what do we do normally? We would say, man, I have enough worries as it is. You be on your own. But astaghfirullah, may Allah pardon us. What did Abdullah ibn Umar do? He was asking that person that I see that you are troubled. Is there anything I can do to help? What is happening with you? What? How are you? Then that man says, Do you nun lazamat me? Oh Abdullah ibn Umar, I have so much debt, I have so much credit that I need to pay back. And I have no way in paying back my creditors, those who I took this loan from. And today is the day that I am meant to answer to them. I have nothing to answer. What did Abdullah ibn Umar say? Did he say, have tawakkul, rely on Allah, go pray two raka'ah, nafal, so that Allah can open up the doors of rizq? No, my dear brothers and sisters. Abdullah ibn Umar said, who did you take these loans and debt from? The person said, from so and so. Abdullah ibn Umar said, would you like me to go speak to them and see if I can do anything about it? Let's see what is happening here. A person is expressing that they are going through financial difficulties. And Abdullah ibn Umar is trying to make the effort to relieve that person of their stress and worries connected to it. So when Abdullah ibn Umar and that person were just about to leave the masjid, were just about to exit the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what happens, my dear brothers and sisters? 
a person calls out and says to Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu that Ya ibn Umar, anasita anta mu'atikif? O oh, Abdullah ibn Umar, have you forgotten that you are in the state of i'tikaf? Then what does Abdullah ibn Umar reply back? He says, Uskut, be quiet. لِأَنْ يَمْشِيَ أَحَدًا فِي حَاجَةِ أَخِيهِ خَيْرٌ لَهُ مِنْ أَنْ يَعْتَكِفَ, أن يعتكف عَشَرَ سِنِينَ أَوْ كَمَا قَالَ عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ He says, to go with a fellow person, to attend their need. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, it is better to do that than to be in the state of i'tikaf for more than 10 years consecutively. Subhanallah. This is the reward of relieving a person's stress. These are the bounties that we have in Islam. So Islam is teaching us, it is giving us the tools that we need to help people in any difficulties that they may be going through. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from among those who truly are able to be the ones who people can open up to, who <coughs> can truly people find relief from their worries and stress. آمين أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم ولجميع المسلمين والمسلمات من كل دم فاستغفروا وتوبوا إليه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله الكفاء والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وقليله أدى الأمانة وبلغ الرسالة ونصح الأمة وكشف الله به الغمة أما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كلامه المجيد وفي فرقانه الحميد إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وأنعم على عبدك ورسولك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وارض اللهم عن الخلفاء الراشدين المهديين ساداتنا أمراء المؤمنين أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعن سائر الصحابة الأكرمين رضي الله تعالى عنهم وعنا بهم أجمعين اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا واهدنا واجعلنا سببا لمن اهتدى اللهم ارزقنا حبك وحب من يحبك وحب عمل يقربنا إلى حبك اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من الهم والحزن اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من الهم والحزن إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء للقربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروني أذكركم واشكروني ولا تذكرون وأقيموا الصلاة